What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the Same Difference Podcast. <laughs> Is this thing on? Hello, friends. Hey, good morning. Happy How Sunday. are you? Happy Black Friday. <laughs> Black Friday. Happy Black History Month. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Happy Friday. Black Friday is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Black History Month, friend. Happy Black History Month, girlfriend. Mm -hmm. We are um the we've put the pedal to the metal with Black History Month. Have we? What you mean? We have. Um, so you know, Meg kicked it off (laughs) with her um announcement of her new deal (laughs) and pretty much doing everything Nicki Minaj says she couldn't and wouldn't do. Oh, like owning her masters and all of that. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Who else? Um, Is your mic close, friend? Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, who else? Oh, who was fighting? Trey Songs and Jack Keese was fighting. Like, what they were? That's new to that? me. Yeah, pulled, uh, Trey Songs pulled his dreads out. Yeah, they had, a, they had to do a Two Tesla, R&B, girl. Two R&B niggas fighting is not serious to me. When was this? What was this over? I missed it, and I'm glad I, I did. I have no idea, but he definitely called Jackie. Is it Jacquees or Jacquees? Jacquees, he called him a rapist a bunch of times and stuff. Yeah. Trey was- songs? Mm-hmm. Hot. Have we forgotten that we're black? Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, you know, we have, you know, put the pedal to the metal with the Black History Month and the antics. You know, we mm. we we want it to be a peaceful, beautiful Black History Month, but you but you know how we can do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, how was your week? My week was pretty dang on good, to be honest with you. I had pretty dang week. on good. All right. Mm, you know I'm country now, Chad. I love um, it. My week was pretty good. I had a good week. Um, ending the week, or maybe I should say starting the week with um, getting my car serviced and um, working on some edits and okay, recording and submitting some things. I feel like this week, like I always feel like I'm never productive enough. I'm never doing enough. I'm always behind. I'm always late on something. But then when I kind of look back, I'm like, I got a lot done this week, Joy. You did pretty damn good. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's how I'm feeling today. Now that I'm looking back and looking forward, pretty okay, good. Okay, come on. Shout out to productivity. Mm-hmm. We love that. Ooh, <laughs> productivity. I no matter like how productive I am, TikTok still got me in jail. Uh, but we move. Oh, we move. I yeah. um, I had a very productive was the word that kept coming up for me this past week. Um, because okay. I, you know, just got a lot of shit done. I feel like, you know, work wise, um, the ending slash beginning of the month is a very busy time just in general for me work wise. Mm-hmm. So I was definitely starting my day, like hammering out emails and just kind of handling business, okay. um, signing things, closing deals. Um, but then also just doing like continuing to do stuff around my apartment. Like I have these moments where I'm like, I love my place. I love it here. So, (laughs) you know, but you know how last year I was like gone all the time. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm just home now. Like I'm home. Like I'm not even like outside. Yeah. I'm not outside, Mm -hmm. outside, just going here, going there, doing this, that, and the third, like I'll be at home Okay, and maybe I will step out, but like, That that is a maybe these days. So okay, yeah, I'm right, productive man. week myself, and then I'm, I'm starting Ed the, Eddie. starting the week being productive, taking Luigi to get his hair cut tomorrow. Okay, mm-hmm. okay, we're looking a little homeless right now. Don't do we Joe like that? Looking like a little stray. <laughs> it's just really irritating me that I can't blur my background. I used to do it when we Aww. started the podcast last when we were doing a podcast a year ago around this time and I know that it could be done and it's just irritating me that I can't necessarily remember how to do it I'll have Mm. to make sure I get that together for um 
next week because it's just bothering me. But anyway, um, <laughs> how, how was your week, friend? It was very productive and busy, like with work. Okay. I just, you know, it, um, I was surprised at how much stuff I got done, actually. Like, you know, you like you were saying earlier, like I was impressed with how much I ended mm-hmm. up getting done at the end of it all. So that's pretty much what I had going on. Aside from work, any personal things that, like how was your working out been? How has your, like um, all the stuff that you kind of wanted to incorporate in your 2024, how's that been going? I... Oh, so I definitely worked out one time <laughs> this week, <laughs> this past week. But I also uh, juiced. So I like I made a bunch of juice. So I've definitely, you know, that's kind of like my breakfast, you know. These okay. Days. So um, even though I did, I only worked out once. I actually did a lot of walking. I went to the office twice last week, and you know, I you know I take public transportation, so I'm moving and grooving. Um, so I was stayed active and I ate relatively healthy and yeah, so. Um, so when you're juicing, like whatever juices that you're putting together, do you add anything in the juice? Like, are you adding honey or anything mm-mm. to sweeten it? Are you, okay. What, so nope. what, what is the juice, like the juice you have in the morning, what's in it? I drink carrot, apple, <laughs> carrot, apple, celery, ginger. That's okay, like so the apple may be sweetening it up, sweeten all that up a little bit, but the rest of those vegetable sounds. Well, you know, carrots are relatively sweet. Are they? Yes. No, well, the carrots I eat, I have to drown them in ranch, so I wouldn't know. Oh, maybe you should bite a carrot without ranch <laughs> one day. <laughs> and you, will... you know, I'm also the girl that puts sugar in my tea, so you know. Girl, yes. So carrots are sweet too. You know, you just, you know, you. Just maybe eat one without ranch and you'll know what I'm talking about. So when you make a juice, you put carrot juice, you don't think like, oh, it could be bitter. It's the celery or like a cucumber that's going to be bitter. Um, so we also talked about this last year because I remember when we were talking about you juicing, we were talking about like some of the skincare benefits. Mm-hmm. Are you still seeing that with your juicing, like, you know, clearer skin or less breakouts or what? So you, that's a very interesting question, and I'm glad you brought that up because I have been playing around with, well, may, not playing around. I've been staying on top of my skincare and all the steps included. Mm-hmm. Um, remember how I said I was kind of on this journey of like using up my stuff, using my shit, or excuse me, using my stuff. Um, I have like a lot of samples. I have like a whole bunch. Mm-hmm. Of I just have the most ridiculous amount of samples of skincare stuff. So I'm like, you know what? I'm about to use these little samples and, and see, see what's popping. And so I don't know. I What I'll say is, yes, of course, I see the benefits of juicing. But I also have been drinking like, a, you know, water too with my little mm-hmm. lemon. Like I've just mm-hmm. really been staying on top of like my water intake. So I can't say for certain if it's the juice that's helping my skin, the water that's helping my skin, or the fact that I've actually been using like my little skincare stuff and really been mm-hmm. a little bit dialed in, you mm-hmm. know, with my skincare. So there's just a, okay. I'm, I'm just making an effort to take care of myself inside and out. And I'm hoping that all of those together are showing up. Making a difference. Yes. Yeah. Is it? I mean, actually, I'm a l- slightly hungover, so it's not really giving right now. <laughs> I was at a I was at a charity gala last night and I had a few glasses of champagne. So yes, are you really an adult if you did, if you aren't hungover at least one Saturday or Sunday out the month though? I can't right. even classify you as a real grown adult. I, I don't mean, think so. It was an open bar and it was really fun to get dressed up and put on a dress. And so yeah, I let the champagne flow. Yeah, okay. I felt like it was worth it. Okay, it was Good. worth I'm it. I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad yeah. To hear it. My skin, uh, she's completed her purge. My skin was, have I was having a skin purge this past week because I incorporated a new product into, I wouldn't even say I've incorporated into my routine. This is a product that I'm only going to be having to use as needed. It is the Palmer's Oil Cleanser and I'm using it for my sebaceous filaments on my nose, on, on my top lip and under my chin and a little bit on my chin. I don't have it here as much, but um, 
I'm just doing that as needed. I would like to realistically only have to use it twice a week. Right now I'm at three times a week, but I can see just with the consistency of my skin adjusting and adapting to what I'm putting on it. Thank y'all so much for the likes and the live. Y'all make sure y'all keep running up the likes and also please comment as we are going through these topics so you can be a part of the conversation. But I do notice a difference um, in my skin and I'm only putting it in those areas. I don't need it all over my face. It's just not necessary yeah. for me. So I'm literally only washing with that Palmer's oil cleanser here. This is it. This is the all that I'm doing. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um. So it's just an additive that I'm going to use every now and again. I'm not incorporating it every day or as a regular part of my routine. Um, but I have noticed the difference. I do like it. I do have a video that I just put on my TikTok yesterday. It's um, how to spot a skin purge. You know, how to tell the difference between your skin purging because you're using a new skincare product versus your skin is having a irritation reaction because mm -hmm. it actually just, your skin just won't work well with that particular product because of whatever additives or active ingredients are in it. Mm -hmm. um, I am, as we talked about last week, I'm trying to push myself back into the algorithm that I really want to be in. And so right now, while I'm working through that, I am going to be repurposing and reposting old content because TikTok ain't showing the kid no love, okay? That's wild. Um, right now, I'm in 200, 300 jail. But I know we're repurposing the old What's content. What's 200, 300 jail? Oh, that's when your video hit 200 or 300 views and then it, it just, that's it. TikTok won't show it to nobody else. Oh, I've, been, I've been there forever since I started. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, first, again, you have to think of things relatively. And as somebody who has the amount of followers that I have, 200 and 300 views on videos just actually doesn't make sense. So, mm -hmm. um but I know that that won't last forever. If I just consistently, at this point, I'm posting more than once a day. Um, I wanted to wait till after the first, once I knew that the system knew I was out of the creativity program beta. But now I'm going to be reposting a couple of times a day. It's going to be new content along with repurposed content to kind of, you know, just get me where I need to be. And another thing I'm doing is as much as I don't like care to do it, I'm doing it because that's what she said you got to do now <laughs> is I'm posting on TikTok in landscape mode. She's trying to be her her step cousin YouTube. And so oh, that's what she wants. Okay. So. Interesting. Yeah, I'm getting a ton, ton more love on Instagram. Really? Yep. My views are much, like double. On Instagram. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I'm like, okay. I had heard that Instagram had updated, had done a change. I ain't gonna say updated, but changed their algorithm a bit. Uh, changed up their algorithm a little bit, and that people were seeing more engagement over there as of lately. Hmm. So, yeah, I, I'm still trying to get to posting more on Instagram. I'm more active in my story. The post, I'm just like, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> You are funny. So that's where I'm at. Okay, okay. Uh, speaking of speaking of um speaking of social media posting, friend, if you don't mind, I would like you to share that post that you posted in your story this morning with our listeners, if you don't mind. <laughs> Do you mind? I don't mind. Okay. <laughs> Cause I feel yeah. like it's just like just because of what I told you and with some of the other comments you got, I think it would just be beneficial for other people to hear it too. Okay, so um, I am a Virgo. I will start there. Do with, <laughs> do with that what you will, but also keep it to yourself. Um, <laughs> so I am just by nature a perfectionist. Like, in it, like everything has to like look good or be a certain way. It has to look a certain way. It has to operate the way I intended it for it to operate. And when it doesn't, it really bothers me and it like in a way that gets under my skin and is quite often ridiculous. So I got dressed up yesterday and I actually did like really actually did my makeup because contrary to popular belief, I'm not a makeup girly. I'm barely, <laughs> I'm barely a skincare girly. I only do it because I've had to since I was a teenager. Like I'm not knee deep in this, in the shit like that. I'm just not. So I actually, it was a whole, like, I was, thank you, Jesus, for steady hands, because I actually did my makeup really good yesterday. <laughs> okay. So I snapped a picture of my highlight. It was on Metro Boom. It was giving. And I was in, the, it was dark out. And so I had the flash on. I rarely ever take a picture with the flash, because I hate it. Um, but anyway, I was like, okay, highlights looking cute. Let me put a little filter on it, whatever. So I post it and it's, you know, I say like mood because I'm like ready to go, lashes popping, whatever. 
And like the obsessive person I am and the millennial that I am, I look at my story over and over again because, you know, Martin Scorsese, like it's just a wonderful story. So I look at it over and over again and I look at my picture and I look at my nose and I'm like, why does it look like there's either a booger or booger sugar in my nose? It looks like it. If somebody was to look at that picture and just kind of look at it, they would probably wonder like, oh, okay, she, you know, she outside. Y'all, y'all see her nose. Y'all see her nose. I start, you know, going cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, obsessing about what should, what somebody could have thought. And, and I'm sitting here like, it was neither, you dummy. So I'm like, why are you even, like, what, <laughs> like, what difference does it make? Because like, what, like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> but it was just bothering me all night <laughs> and I didn't delete it because that because in my mind I'm like okay well if I delete it then somebody that saw something was like we'll oh, really think I that that's it. really what it was right she had to picture mm-hmm. her no you know so so not only have we jumped off of the deep end with thinking <laughs> that <laughs> somebody thinks that there's something in my nose I have taken a deep sea dive <laughs> into thinking that somebody would think something if I deleted the picture. Literally ridiculous, right? So I got a boy. Story. That is wow. Did you do you Not see only am I thinking something about the picture? I'm thinking if I delete the picture, that's gonna mean something. That's that is deep, friend. Isn't that a little sad, actually? <laughs> Go talk but to I the lady. Like, but I feel like it's it would you take everybody else with you when you talk to her. Okay. Line them up. <laughs> Tell them she got a whole (laughs) list of folks that she needs to go through because I feel like it's a realistic part of posting these days. Oh, so even just even just talking, talking through this with you and just thinking like when people say I overthink. Yes. Deal with it (laughs) Mm -hmm. because I I've been this way my entire life. Anyway, I look at the picture again this morning. Because how many times do you have to look at your story, Pasha? Oh, well, everybody do that, child. I'm watching myself like I ain't never seen it the first, second, third, or hundredth time. I look at the story. I look at the picture again, and I'm like, that picture, it just look. It looks so bad. So I put a message up, and I said the following. Listen to this, y'all. Listen to what Pasha just posted on her story about the picture that she was being self-conscious about. Go ahead, friend. I keep looking at this picture because it looks like I either have a booger or booger sugar in my nose and it's driving me up the fucking wall. Deleting would have been questionable. I'm also assuming that you are all looking that hard at a photo, which is also sad because girl, don't nobody care about your stupid ass or your nose. (laughs) Anyway, I think it's glitter and the flash that got me messed up because I am a tree hugger and I would never be that sloppy. Because I just could not get it out of my head that somebody would think that that picture looked bad. I could, I'm I could, double tapping the live because I can relate. If you could relate, double tap the live as well. And that's when I'm like, uh, yeah. I, I couldn't get I couldn't, even this morning, Joy, even this morning, I couldn't get it out of my head. Isn't that crazy? It, it is crazy, but it's, it's crazy. relatable because I've been there. I've been there. I've done that. I've studied a video or a picture so hard and so long that I made something wrong with it when there was absolutely nothing wrong. I just made it up in my head and then it became real. I made up several scenarios though. Like, are you like, what's wrong? (laughs) I Mm -hmm. I made up several scenarios though. It wasn't just the one. Mm -hmm. The hell is wrong with me? But the same anyway, thing wrong with everybody else. Like I told you, I think it is just a hyperfixation on perfection. Yes. That to me, and this is just my humble opinion, okay? To me, started on Instagram. I would I believe I would perfect, agree. the perfectionism model started on Instagram. It started with the oh uh, man. It still is it man, it's just it that that goes so deep. Mm-hmm. The perfectionism thing from, you know, showing what your house looks like to showing how you make this or how you do that or what your relationship looks like or how you parent your kids or how you clean your of- house. Yes. The perfectionism yeah. that started on Instagram has not only 
is not only contained to Instagram, but because we consume so much of it, it implanted in our minds. And now everything that we post online, whether it be Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, Twitter, YouTube, doesn't matter. We feel as though we have to get it right. Mm -hmm. Literally. Yeah. It is enough to drive anybody crazy, particularly if you are somebody who, I don't want to say care about what other people think, but you at least care about perception showing sure. up as you feel about yourself. I don't of like course, to miss 100%. Shit, I'm a smart girl and I know how to spell. I know the difference between two, two, and two. I know right. the difference between there, there, and there. So when I misspell it, it's coming down and I'm re I'm rewriting it. You know? <laughs> that type of thing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> I don't want nobody to be like dummy don't even know the damn people don't really know the difference between two two and two and well, I, do. And like... I do i don't like <laughs> mis- i don't like to misspell it right right even in in you know and those are honest mistakes misspelling a word but also yeah i'm taking it down and i'm going to repost it again with the correct spelling because what the fuck <laughs> right it's just that i was in the moment i was like doing multiple things at a time or i was typing fast or auto correct got gotcha girl uh. Mm-hmm. And it didn't come out how I wanted to I come didn't, out. I didn't want to say ducking. That's not what I wanted to say. Okay. <laughs> Even when I'm texting somebody and I put OMW, don't put on my wave an exclamation point because I'm not that damn excited. <laughs> don't do that. It's unnecessary. I'm not that damn excited. Oh my hey, goodness. What's going on? Thank y'all for joining the live. We are just recording the same difference podcast for the week, and we would love if you guys would stay tuned, comment, give us some feedback so you can be a part of the conversation. And also double tap the live, share it with a friend. So yeah. yeah. But you're not alone, friend. Your picture was fine. You looked Thank amazing. You. Thanks. Thank Nobody you. was that deep deep into your nostril but you. So lit like girl. Uh, <laughs> girl. <laughs> Yeah. Like sometimes I I do self checks like that often. That has been something I've been I feel like I've been doing that the last 6 months. Like girl, no one is thinking about you. Uh, relax. I relax. Do it all the time. Re- like I do it all the time. No one is no one is fucking thinking about you, sweetie. And I like those self checks. They're necessary. You know, humble thyself. They're necessary, but they can become obsessive and compulsive. And yeah. I think I had mentioned this last week or it said it on a video or something. No one's perceiving you as much as you think you are. Like, get get a grip. Right. Get over yourself. Nobody even cares that much. Right. Like, and right. I try to I try to use cases or I try to use situations like the one that you were talking about, how you felt like somebody was perceiving your picture and I try to relate it back to when I'm having my own thoughts like that because Pasha I looked at that picture I was like okay pro- sad profile going out be makeup is be given stepping out on you know for the night I liked it and I went on to the next one and I forgot about it I never thought about it again until you reposted it and said something and then when you said what you were analyzing I went in to look and see but before no right wasn't doing it didn't care right you know, what's funny is you mm-hmm. shared a very sweet message and was like, um, girl, no, like you're fine. <laughs> it's, it's you good. And there were a couple of other people that were like, oh no, I, I would have never, that thought mm-hmm. never crossed my mind. You are tripping. But now that you bring that up, I have these weird feelings about when I post stuff myself and it's just like, okay, I'm, I'm glad that like, clearly I was obsessing and, mm-hmm. um, like being like like I said, I had to have a self check. Like, girl, like okay, it's really it's not that it's not that. And I think now that now that we're talking about this, now that I think about it, I think this is actually my issue with Instagram. The reason that I say I can't get into it, it just feels cringe to post. I think that's actually what it is. And I think for me, because I gained a community of people on TikTok mm-hmm. over the last less than a year. When I have been on Instagram for over a decade and I haven't built the same community, I think the thought of posting things from my TikTok where I have people, where I engage with people, where I am comfortable and bringing it to a place where I have been for over a decade and haven't felt that same type of love and support. I think that is what makes me cringe. Like, Mm. oh my God, these people are looking at me. These people are seeing what I'm doing. These people are judging what I'm doing. These people here don't get it. I yeah. think that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. we're talking about it. That's exactly what it is for me. Yep. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, good old social media. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if it's time for a detox. <laughs> You know what I'm not going to do? I'm not going to detox. I think that some some stuff that I'd be like, oh, girl, don't do this no more. Don't do that. And I was like, no, work through it. Train your mind to be stronger than that because you are stronger than that. So yeah. instead of doing a detox, I'm going to make myself post it and just get over myself. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Yes, because that. what will happen with the detox is I will I will. That's that's self self soothing to me personally, mm. because, OK, I'm detoxing, so I don't have to be there. So I don't have to be posting. So I don't have to be perceived. And then when I come back, I'm going to have those same ridiculous thoughts yep. all over yep. again instead of just, girl, get over your damn self. And post seriously. It. Post yeah. the picture and go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, yeah, that was that was my morning, my Sunday morning, me obsessing over that picture on the wake up, looking at my story again. Um, so D, D's commenting on, we're streaming live, um, on TikTok through my page. It was always joy. We are trying to get the same difference podcast and passions page up to a thousand. So we can also go live from those pages at some point in time. But, (laughs) um, D says, friend, your skin is giving me life. Did you share your skincare routine yet? So Pasha was actually on here just talking about her juicing. And, um, we had talked about this some last year, seeing the benefits of, a routine, not just a skincare routine, but juicing, drinking water, doing our skincare. I did yesterday post a video. It's pinned to the top of my page. It talks about how to spot a skin purge, um, knowing the difference between your skin purging because of new a new product that you're using versus your skin being actually irritated with a product that just won't work for you and isn't isn't going to mesh well with your skin. That video was pinned to the top of my page, and I will continue to post more skin t- skincare tips. As we go throughout the week, I will not start the Skin Talk series, though, until I move. Y'all know how I feel about it, and that's just what we're going with. But thank you for the compliment. Appreciate it. And make sure when you go look at the video about the skincare purge, do a girl a favor and share it for me, because you know Miss TikTok been playing with the kid. Okay? Um, What are you using right now? Are you sharing that? Or are you, are we, do we have oh, to Oh, sure. Wait? Yeah, I actually want to do a video of me just actually washing my face and and showing how I do it and maybe having some words on the screen that kind of gives tips as I go because I won't talk because my face will be full of water. I don't want to get soap in my mouth, so on and so forth. But one of the things that I told my friend that he told me was really helpful. First of all, I got him to insert um, a collagen gummy into his skincare routine. And he told me probably like two weeks ago, friend, ever since you told me to do X, Y, and Z, I ain't had a breakout since. And that's unusual for me. So, just so y'all know, the world skincare tips do help the people that actually pay attention. But what I'm using, huh, I do change it up based on what my skin is doing at the moment. My skin will change up based on um, the weather, based on where I live and the water quality. But I'm still using my um, Fenty face wash, my Total Cleanser face wash, and I triple cleanse. I have oily skin. Okay, sometimes my skin goes between combination and oily, but for the most part, she's always oily. So I can triple cleanse and I do not dry out. Okay, Um, I do my Fenty Total Cleanser first. Then I go in with, I'm I'm actually going to buy a full size, but I had a trial size from Sephora. It is the Fenty Cherry Exfoliator. I exfoliate every day. Unless I am taking off makeup, I won't exfoliate until 24 hours later. But I do exfoliate every day. It's just what my skin needs. And then I go in with my Urban RX. Uh, what is it called? We talked about this. The Urban RX Cleansing Balm. I don't know what it is, but it's help, supposed to help with even skin tone. Those are my three cleansers. Even skin and you know what I've been doing recently <laughs> that, I'm, that, that I had been doing is I just stopped drying my face. I might try to get a little bit of the water that's dripping and, and, but I don't, I just stop drying my face and then I go in with my elf, um, holy hydration toner while my face is still damp. I go in with my Vichy eye cream face is still damp. I apply my snail mucin face is still damp. I put on my bio oil, uh, face is still damp. I add my moisturizer. Okay. And I do not rub her in. The only thing that I will sometimes, that I will somewhat rub is my eye cream, but I'm really doing more of a swooping motion Mm -hmm. with her. But all of those products I put into my skin, my hand, and I press Mm -hmm. into my wet face. 
while my pores are still open, I am pressing that into my pores because I want my pores and my skin to soak all of that up. I don't rub it in and I don't want it to, ooh, I got this product. Let me get it all in there as dry. Let me mm -hmm. add another product. You should not be adding your product to dry skin. Please stop mm -hmm. doing that. It is literally sitting on top of your skin and not getting into your pores. Do not add it to dry skin. So once I have my moisturizer on, my skin is not damp, but she's still kind of, you know, moist. And I just let her soak in. She'll soak in. The rest of the day, she'll just be sucking up all that goodness that I pressed, pressed on her. <laughs> uh, let's see. Somebody said, not going to lie, I've only used it once because my consistency is garbage, but I want to get back on it. Make sure you follow, you're following me and stay tuned for those skincare tips and go back and look at my hair, skin, and nails playlist as well. Uh, Pasha, they want to know if you have any juice recipes. Uh -huh. I make the same juice every time. <laughs> Carrot, apple, celery, and ginger. Um, yeah, so I juice two cups of celery or uh, celery juice, two cups carrot juice, two cups apple juice, and then a fourth cup of ginger because it's very like, that flavor is oh. very, very strong and potent. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. that makes uh, four, four little mason jars of juice. So, and I drink one every morning. That's and you it. don't add any sweetener, no sugar, no, no honey. Nope, I'm nope. But you know, I'm like 76 years old these days, and I can't have everything super sweet anyway. So the juice, I, I appreciate the juice. I put a couple ice cubes in it, put a straw in it. You know, if y'all feel like y'all like, like me and you need a a sweetener, raw honey, just a smidge would probably be no, all you need. Put no diabetes in that juice, Joy. Well, I didn't tell them. She's not talking about the raw honey. She's talking about how I make my tea. Now, y'all know my tea has beauty collagen in it. I do have one a video fourth to cup of sugar about the beauty collagen. But when I make my tea, y'all, I am a country girl. I put sugar and lemon juice in my tea. That's just what one I need. One fourth cup. Pour a I fourth have, cup I of have, sugar and look at how much I, sugar that is, y'all. Get a scoop and do one fourth cup of sugar and look at how much sugar that is. She puts it in this one This is cup also of tea. a huge mug. Like, what? this is a big mug. I don't. It doesn't say how many ounces it holds, but this is a this mug is huge. Yeah, it's a lot so, of and so is one fourth cup of sugar. <laughs> I have tried to use honey, y'all. I have tried to use honey, and this is my issue with honey. If I'm gonna buy the honey, I want the organic honey that the people are actually scraping off the half and selling to <laughs> local grocery stores. I don't you want said I want it straight out the bee. <laughs> I do, but you know that honey is more expensive. Okay, I can buy a 12 ounce honey from Publix that is the Publix brand for about eight, nine dollars versus buying six ounces of the locally sourced, the raw locally sourced honey and a six ounce container is fifteen dollars. And yeah. I like it sweet, so I'm pouring a lot that don't last me but about 10 days. Oh, Lord, we're all growing. You be drinking diabetes, y'all. And 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 diabetes. And maybe one day I will lose the taste. That I will lose the craving for the sweet taste <sighs> that my grandma laid right on the tip of my tongue. But until then, girl, uh, my tea is good. Okay, we're doing a yin and yang. But no, okay? we're not. Why we're not have... We don't sweeten the juice. Please <laughs> do not sweeten the juice, y'all. Don't do it. Well, just when it comes it. to my tea, just think of it this way. While it may have more sugar than Pasha thinks I should have, it does have beauty collagen in its skin is on glow. Okay? Okay. Girl. Okay. Um, <laughs> sidebar, if you like a sweeter juice, you can add oranges and red apples. Okay. Um, if you like your juice more tart, you can add green apples. Mm, um, okay. you also if you don't if you, if you can't find celery or if there's not enough you can use cucumber that's a very good base a very good source of like a lot of juice it's, a, it's just you know it's water essentially mm -hmm. but um, mm -hmm. that gives you a good base as well carrots you don't get too much so you have to you, you have to juice a lot of carrots um but i i actually i, I enjoy it um very much i don't know what's therapeutic about slicing everything and rinsing it off and like watching it turn to juice but i enjoy it it tastes really good to me um i think if people if our listeners try it um people that are tuned into the live if you guys try it i think you would appreciate the experience and you might surprise yourself 
you know, and then you you might get creative and decide you want to try something different. Like I made juice that had too much ginger, but I drank it. I, I was very, you know, I was awake and, you know, but it was too gingery, but I still rocked with it. So you'll surprise yourself. You should try it. Um, I will spell it for you. But in the meantime, Pasha, can you join the live so that your name pops up in the list? Somebody wants to follow you. Um, I'll spell it for you now, but Pasha's going to join the live. So anybody else that wants to follow Pasha, if you missed the spelling, just go to the top right corner where it says the list of people who are in the lives. Her name is Pasha. Her Instagram and her Twitter and her TikTok are all Passionista, P-A-S-C-H-A-N-I-S-T-A. She just joined the live. So if you want to go ahead and they go to damn autocorrect. If you want to, if you want to go ahead and follow her now, the topic that we're going to get into, I'm not going to say it's controversial, but to some people it will be, mm. um, this is our main topic for today's podcast. Um, this is something that passion and I were kind of mulling over earlier in the week. And we decided, you know, this would be pretty good topic to bring to the podcast. And I hope you all will spend some time with us this morning. And also weigh in on the conversation. Um, where do we start, Fran? <clears throat> um, so I, this all came to my mind because, you know, Twitter is one of my, like my most favorite social media. And I get a wealth of information from there. And sometimes things on TikTok make their way onto Twitter. And what they were showing was videos of all these um, white women graduating from nursing school. And every single one of the girls in the, TikTok had engagement rings. And so obviously this brought up the conversation of, you know, uh, white women are told when they go to college to get their degree and to find their husband. This is something that I have heard in many different TV articles in conversation. Just, you know, that's just, you know, I don't want to call it like a hush hush thing, but it's just, there's like a, a consensus amongst people that know that, you know, more often than not, you know, white women are going to college to get their degree and they find their husband. Hmm. Um, so, you know, I'm reading some of the comments about the video and just kind of, you know, thinking culturally, it, it, it it's very, it's prevalent. I mean, it, it makes sense. And I saw it. I, you know, I kind of took the video in. I looked at the commentary and I moved on. I go to a work event and, you know, I am, you know, if it's, it's a bowl of chocolate chip ice cream in my industry, there's only, you know, there's a sprinkle mm. of us. Okay. That and, was a good analogy for you. Yes. So, you know, a lot of the people that I am around are non-brown and, um, or, you know, in our variety of ages, either they're old white men or they're like young, youngish, younger white women. And then like, there's me, you know? Um, and we have, there are three women that I know of, white women. One is the same age as me, the rest are younger, that I've gotten engaged, um, Mm -hmm. to their college boyfriend. Mm. And it is literally the, it, it, it was, it was watching that TikTok and then having this experience in real time. In real time. Wow. In real time. Do you said that people are what age now? So the so the one girl that I work with, she's 26, 25 or 26. And she just got mm-hmm. engaged to her college boyfriend. They've okay. been together for like six years, seven years, or maybe even five. I don't know. It's been a it's been a good stretch of time, but they met in college and they're getting um they're getting married. Um, and then the next girl, she is, I didn't even know how old she was. And so when she, we were catching up, hadn't seen her in a while. She asked me if I had any travel plans, blah, blah. I asked her and she kind of just like looked down and showed me her hand and she was like, I got engaged. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, congratulations, beautiful ring, you know, and I like this girl. She's really cool. So, you know, I was genuinely happy for her. And I was just like, tell me everything because I'm a hopeless romantic. I want to hear the story. What happened? What you mm-hmm. wear? What he say? Do you remember? Like, she was like, you know what? Honestly, I blacked out when he proposed. I just, mm. I heard, will you marry me? <laughs> so, you know, we, you know, Kiki in a little bit. 
Um, and then she's like, you know, well, it had been a while. So I was trying to figure out like when, when was it going to happen? And I was like, well, what do you mean? And she was like, oh, we've been together nine years. Mm-hmm. And I was like, nine years? And I was, Oop. We don't have to edit her out. But I was like, um, girl, how old are you? And she was like, I'm 27. And she been with this man nine years? Nine years. Whew. So clearly, I, I, and I was like, oh, is this your college sweetheart? And she was like, yeah, it is. And so again, it's just like, it's a it, it's an, an example in real time of like this TikTok that I'm seeing. And so, you know, part of the conversation that was being had on Twitter was that culturally, that is this is the norm for them. Mm. This is the norm for them. Mm literally yeah because wow. like because i i was i you're going to college to get that degree sis and then you're going to get a job and you're going to make a life for yourself so that you don't have to depend on anyone or any man you know to take care of you mm, mm, mm. you know i would have i i don't know Mm, mm, mm. it's just it's, it was just a, i don't i don't have so much popping in my mind girl i don't have you know what's funny i'm trying to articulate how i feel about it all and i don't know that i i don't have any feelings because i'm actually very happy with where i am in life and what i've been what i've managed to do i, I like where my degree <laughs> has gotten me and you know would i have gotten as far as i have if there was a man around would that have held me back? Would that have stopped mm. me from doing certain things, going certain places? Um, moving, 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 you know? Um, but also why, when did, when, how and when was the message different for us? Mm. Mm. When, when did that happen? Well, was the, that, was the, that ever the message? Go ahead, because um, we can we can do this all day. <laughs> I, think go ahead. That this, I think this is actually the framework, the messaging that white women are giving their daughters, and the message that black women families are giving us when it comes to going to college and what you are there for and what you should be doing is actually laying the groundwork for some of the issues that women like you and I. Okay, single successful 30 something black women are having today. And I'm going to, that's the framework. And I'm going to tell you what the product is. And then we're going to talk about everything in between. Mm -hmm. When our black mothers and black families tell us to go to college and don't be worrying about them boys and get the degree so that you can create a life for yourself and um, support yourself, what it actually manifests in real time at this point in our life is the conversations that we are having about splitting shit 50 50. now let me make the connection because the white women not having that conversation about splitting shit 50 50. okay we have amassed so much success and money in between going to college and meeting a man let's say at 35 that we make more money than them And so in order for them to be with us and us to be able to maintain the lifestyle we have created for ourselves, have the home we want, drive the car we want, go on the trips we want, the only way for them to afford it is for us to go 50-50. No other race of people is having conversations on podcasts about going 50-50, about if a man should be paying for everything. It's not even something that they discuss. They don't talk about it because... They, their, their mothers, their families were telling them to go to college and find their husband. Mm -hmm. They were telling them to go to college and find their husband. And now these people that you have seen, albeit on TikTok or in real time with the industry and the coworkers that you have are now being told, stay home. I know you got your degree. I know you smart. I know you can work the job, but go ahead and stay home with the kids And then it it becomes a life where he's making all the money. He's doing all the working outside of the home. And you're taking care of the inside of the home and the children. And then it's like 50-50. Why would we be doing 50-50? Go ahead. Why would I be paying it? Mm -hmm. That's where I feel like 
The only way to stop the conversation in the black community about going 50-50 on stuff, about who's supposed to do this, who's supposed to pay for that, is this too much, are you doing too much, is to start with the young women we have going to college. And I'm not even going to say telling them that like white women, they should be going there to find their husband. Mm -hmm. But some type of way, we have, to, we have to change up the mindset. We have to change up the mindset and not just of the girls, but the boys too. Yes. Because how did they get to an age and a place, career or lack thereof, that they feel as though they would never, ever dream of paying 100% of anything for a woman? There are some men with that mentality. Mm -hmm. Why would I be paying? Why would I be paying 100%? You live here. You mm -hmm. use the light. You use the water. You drive the car. We need insurance. <sighs> if I wasn't here, you'd still have to pay for it yourself anyway. That was that was that was proposed to me at one point in time in in my younger <clears throat> years when I was seeing someone who didn't understand why I needed him to put in on the bills. If I wasn't living here, you'd still have to pay for everything yourself. I don't give a shit. Then I'm going to live here by myself. How about it? Thank you. Thank you. Because we we don't play those games up in this piece. But anyway, that was eons ago. <laughs> that was eons ago. Um, yeah, that, it was just, it, it just, you know, you just kind of, I had to chuckle to myself because I saw the TikTok and then... Boom, here I am. So, so um Chanel, why do I always do that? Charte, I always see her name of her business. It was I am Chanel Cosmetics, and I I start wanting to call her Charte, who is married and has been for several years, says I think it has to do with black men being taken away from the community in various ways. I think that is why. Why are people tell us to go to college and make sure that we yes. set ourselves up for success? Yes. Because we can't, in our community, the way that things work out have shown us that we have to have that card in the deck. We for can't sure. completely 100% rely on thinking that we're going to meet a man that's going to take care of it all. And right. that will be there to take care of it all. That is absolutely where that stems from. Mm hmm but how do we change the conversation about this 50? It's just, oh, just as somebody who is single and dating, it is just, I personally don't have those conversations with men. I don't like to talk to men about money. I think we shouldn't even have a discussion about it. I feel like if you are asking for my time and asking to take me on a date, we shouldn't be talking about money. You should be pulling out your wallet. And you def and if you getting a whip or something, you definitely ain't asking me for no money. Um. But it's making me tired. It's making my head hurt. It's just the thought of it. Just the thought of it because, <laughs> you know, I also was wondering. Um, I don't want to call, I don't know how I don't many call the man broke, but they be broke. <sighs> well, I think part of it is, you know. They be broke. I think part of it is that a lot of, a lot of and this is not all, so y'all please. Take everything I'm saying with a grain of salt and, and don't nail me to the cross on one thing in particular. But there are more white men that go to college, get a degree and become successful than there are black men who do the same thing. That just is what it is. OK, look up the statistic if you don't believe me. You do that on your time, not mine. Um, but because of that. You know. I don't know, friend. Just the thought of that. I have so many thoughts about it. It's like I can't even get my thoughts out all the way about the matter. How many of those women, though, how many of those women have children? Because that's the other piece of it, too. None of them. None of them have children. None of them have children. Mm -mm. Hmm. Nope. Okay. Hmm. I, have set, I have a theory about um, men not mm. growing up wanting to be you know, or understanding what it means to be like a protector and a provider and to be like in the mm -hmm. home mm -hmm. um, as a as a kid who grew up with a single parent because I'm speaking from experience I am not here to I, I'm not speaking for men and I'm not speaking for all men this is my theory this is a theory this is something that I've conjured up in my head and if you caught the beginning of the episode you know I go leaps and bounds in this motherfucker okay <laughs> this is my theory um, that just like me, 
there were a lot of little boys who were raised in a single parent home. It was their mama that was taking care of them. Okay. What? Oh, no, friend. I'm letting you finish your thought and I'm going to read the comments from oh. the live. You go ahead. But she's literally touching on exactly what you get ready to speak on. I um, already know. Go ahead. Okay. So, um, these, there are little black boys that are growing up with single moms. They are not seeing their father in the home. They're not seeing their dad take their mom out on a date. They're not mm. seeing any man come by and take their mom on a date, take her out, show her a good time, bring her home. They, you know, if there's no man in the home, they're not seeing that. They're not seeing mm -hmm. that example. Um, let's say this mom, who's a single mom raising her son, has to live with her mom. Mm -hmm. Is there a grandfather in the home? Chances are mm -hmm. no. Mm -hmm. So then you've got another generation that isn't there. You don't even you don't even have a grandfather in the home that might mm -hmm. have some old school ideals and may mm -hmm. actually teach this young man how to be a gentleman and how to respect a woman. There's, mm -hmm. there's an example. When you know better, you do better. Mm -hmm. So if there's no example in the home to show you what that is or what it means to be a protector and a provider and to be a gentleman and to take a woman out on a date and to know how to slow dance and to make sure mm. you have a money, you have enough money when you take a woman on a proper date. And when she feels uncomfortable or tells you no, you understand and you moving right along. Like mm -hmm. if there is no example of that in the home, they don't know it. On mm -hmm. the flip side, if there is a man around, some there there's also this thing that happens where the mom pops up pregnant and now you have a sibling, but there's no mm -hmm. man around. Mm -hmm. So you've normalized now having having children, your mother having children and doing it all on her own. On her own. Not having any help. So, Ain't no 50-50, it's 100% her. So then you you raise a man... Who, in, who steps out into the world with no guidance, no example mm -hmm. to follow, and he knocks up some girl and leaves her to, you know, take care of herself and figure it out on her own because my mom did it. Right. Now, this goes into what Charte is saying on the live. It's like we are seen as less precious, less fem feminine. We're less likely to be protected. It's sad. And then we do too much to pick up his slack. And she says it's not every case, but it's a lot. And yeah. I think it's enough that this is a constant conversation and a constant issue and a constant problem in our community specifically. I can't speak about what well, I can. I can speak at face value about what we all see. OK, we see how people from other cultures move, be it Asian, Indian, Caucasian. We see how they move, but we know and we see how we move. Yes. It's that Pasha is talking about, about, you know, you living with granny. Mama living with granny, you living with granny, mama pop up pregnant, never saw your daddy, never saw your siblings daddy. That is a real issue in our community. And not that it doesn't happen to other cultures, but the frequency and the rate that it happens in ours is astronomical. Mm -hmm. And it's really got to not even slow down. It's got to stop. It is. It is. Now, I have seen, and without putting, you know, we, we do our best to tell these stories and give these examples without putting the people who we know and love business out there too much. but. I have and I love I love my black people and I love being black. I love I am black and I love it and I'm and, and and I'm ten toes down with my community, but I can critique this community that I am a part mm -hmm. of. That I yeah. and some of the shit I'm a I'm a product of. Like, come on, mm -hmm. like right. We're talking about it is because we do love we love our community so much, but we love it so much we want better for yes. each other. Yes, you know. So yes. this is the reason we're having the conversation. If in, if it, just in case anybody come across this clip, keep it cute and understand where this comes from. This comes from a place of love and a place of wanting to do better. Because not only do I not subscribe to doing fifty fifty nonsense with a man, I'm certainly not friend to teach my daughter to accept it, and I'm not gonna teach my son to do it. OK, and I know what it looks like to grow up in a household and to see a man there and provide and do and be. And I can tell you that children actually pay attention to that because the way yes. my two brothers date at the age of 23 is the way that I want a man my age to be dating. Girl. They didn't see exactly what Pasha was talking about. They saw mama and granny doing it on their own. They saw them. Oh, OK, well, if I don't have the money, I guess I'll just go downtown to get food stamps. So I guess I'll get public assistance or I'll live in public housing like I have seen 
my some of my older old friends from my past live a life that I wouldn't dream of walking down that path because that's what you came from. Yeah. That's what you struggled from. Why yeah. would you then go create an additional generation of kids to turn around and do the same shit that you didn't want to have to do yourself? Right. It just it, it's it it doesn't make sense to me. Now, although there are some boys who do see, you know, their mama doing it all and not having the right father figure. What I will say, based on my experience in just dating, the men who go through that and didn't have a daddy around, but they change, they have a different trajectory in life. They amass a certain type of money. They have Mm -hmm. a certain type of career and they live a certain type of lifestyle. They have the type of money that if a woman pulls out her wallet or wants to help you pay, it is insulting. Yes. So it's not all the time. But the ones who want you to go 50-50, are the ones who, like I call the day nap, okay? Uh, no. Driver. Stop. I said it depends. Stop. Stop. UPS driver, okay? And that's not easy. To, that's not hard to tell how much a UPS driver is making because we can look it up on, on the internet. Oh the UPS God. driver is looking for a relationship style that is non-monogamous. You can't even afford to misspell <laughs> monogamous. Yet and still, you want a situation where you have more than one person, partner, wife, girlfriend. I don't know what you want to call it. Y'all not even making enough money for that to happen. Okay. And these are the same type of people where you can't afford to live alone. Now I'm not saying the UPS driver can't live alone, but what I'm saying is y'all working at KFC and Mickey D's and Walmart and get your money, baby. Okay. Cause you're an adult and nobody should be having to take care of you. But some people have careers and jobs that they have to have someone go 50 50 with them and y'all be wanting a relationship style that looks like you can't afford it oh child the topic in the conversation it just sends me i feel like there's I so need many to layers there's, there's so many layers there's, there's so many layers and we, so many layers we, we just, just, it's hard to deconstruct them all one at a time so let me try to like categorize my brain so we can talk about this and make sense of it on the podcast you know and it would let's first get into let's first get into all of all the things we've talked about let's start with what why, what these other cultures i don't want to point anybody out specifically yeah, yeah. right now but let's start with what these other cultures tell their children when it comes to going to college and what they are there for versus us what when you went to college what was it your assumption that you were supposed to be doing there? And what was college supposed to be about? Um, I went there to get my degree to, because, you know, my mom, my mom went to college and then she dropped out. She got pregnant with me and didn't finish. So in her mind, my daughter's going and she's going to finish. So that was mm-hmm. hammered into my mind from day one. Once my mom figured out, oh, okay, she, she kind of smart. All right, Mm. we're going to we about to ride this wave. And so then my mom, you know, made sure she was locked in with my teachers. And, um, you know, I read a lot. I was I was a nerdy kid. I was I was an only child. I read a lot. I was a nerdy kid. I was very creative. I think my imagination ran so wild as an only child. And that's why I'm kind of like a little cuckoo now. (laughs) Um, But, you know, shout out to my mom for nurturing that. But school i just always my mom just knew like my daughter's smart she's gonna go smart go far because she's smart so um in my she my mom also told me when i was in college i was kind of partying and kicking it and lollygagging Mm. and i got caught up and i couldn't finish i want you to go to school and stay focused you know Mm. i really you know if you she was like i don't want you to take any time off after high school i want you to go straight to college right after high school because if you waste time and put it off and say you're not going to go, you'll never go. So mm. my mom was the one that was like hell bent on getting me to college and getting me across the finish line. Honestly. So did she ever say anything about going to college and potentially meeting your husband? No, that was never okay. a part of our conversation. Okay. Because, you yeah, know. Yeah, and the reason I asked that is because you, you were talking about the video you saw that made its way to Twitter from TikTok is they were saying that white women are having that conversation with their daughters. Oh, you're probably going to meet your husband in college. Yeah, I met your dad in college. I'm sure that's the story. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. just just okay. imagine two kids whose parents met in college are both mm-hmm. in college and they meet each other and then they can tell the story about how they met in college just like their parents met in college, mm-hmm. just like their mm-hmm. parents met in college. Like, it's a whole generational thing. Like, it's a mm-hmm. thing. 
Um, so the person that you know that you spoke about, they <laughs> were with somebody for nine years, but they're what, 26, 27, and they just got engaged? Yeah. To their college, the person that they were dating in college. Yeah. Now, can you imagine doing that? Meeting somebody at 18 and being with them for nine years from the age is not, it's not the fact of being with somebody for nine years. It's the fact of being with somebody for nine years from when you were age 18. And you knew then that you wanted to be with this person forever. <sighs> See, that's where I get stuck. And the reason I say I get stuck is because the guys that I knew at 18. No, I, I, I didn't I mean, I, the person that, I was at 18 is a no. Right, that too. <laughs> The person I was at 18 and even the person I was at 27, I can say 100% without a shower of a doubt, I was not suited to be a wife at 27. Right. right. I personally, a man aside, I personally was not suited to be a wife at 27. Now, I saw my mom be a wife. Mm -hmm. I saw my grandma be a wife. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that it was ever instilled in me. I don't know what conversations those women had, but in me, my, my grandma... My mama never had a conversation with me about going to college and meeting a husband or even aspiring to be a wife at the age of 27. Right. It really, what was more instilled in me in our, in our house was go get your education, get your degree and, um, live your life. Like yeah. enjoy your life. Enjoy yeah. being young and being able to hang out and go out. Don't bring no babies in this house too soon, too early. Cause yeah. we'll sit you down because I won't be watching them. Yeah, that was what I was told. Yeah, my mom that very much that. But then she also said, "The world is your oyster. <laughs> you can do and have whatever you want. The world is your oyster." And so you mm. know, and she always would say, "I want you to go do be or go be see and do. Like I want you, to, mm. I want you to do it all. Like anytime I tell her I'm going somewhere, she's like so excited for me and like." She'll tell me, like, I live vicariously through you. I love when you share your pictures. Like, she's, you know, I know that, I know her grandma, my grandma and my mom are, like, hoping and, like, waiting and, like, wondering, like, is it going to happen for her? Like, where's our grandbaby? Where's our great grand? Like, I know, Mm. I know they're waiting for it. Um, Mm -hmm. And, you know, but also that was, I mean, the message wasn't, it wasn't like y'all hammered that into my mind when I was Mm -hmm. growing up. Like, yeah, I know I need to know how to cook and I need to know Mm -hmm. how to clean and keep a home Mm -hmm. because, Mm -hmm. you know, if you can't cook them, you know, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. So, you know, (laughs) I have, I know all of the pick me ideals. I have them all. I I can do them all. Not pick me ideas. Because some of them are a little pick me. Some of them are a little pick me. <laughs> but also, like I, I there is a little bit of truth to some of those things. And I can't say that I'm not like a submissive person when I'm in a relationship and I like am in love with you and obsessed with you. Mm-hmm. Like, of course, I'm mm-hmm. gonna just be like a little delicate flower and do whatever you say. But um, on the flip side. I have always been super ambitious and driven, and my grandma mm-hmm. and my mom. And everyone around me supported that, fostered that, and kind of that mm. was the like you're we you're gonna go far. You do all of this stuff, you're gonna go far, and I am going far. So then, as far as going to college and getting a degree and going far and doing all of the things, I just wonder if the person who was still with their college uh, boyfriend at uh, age eighteen all the way up to twenty seven, I just wondered. Not to say that you she that person couldn't have been living life. Couldn't have been traveling, couldn't have been hanging out with her girlfriends. But I think that it likely may have been limited somewhat because you are in a relationship. And we all know single you and in relationship, you got to be two different people when it comes to certain things. It got to be, right. a, you know, a touch different. Otherwise, what's the point? That's number one. And number two, I wonder if the same person had gotten all the opportunities that you got to move to, you know, switch cities to advance your career did being in a relationship since the age of 18 hold them back from even being able to do that? Mm. Because if you were somebody for nine years and y'all have lived in the same city or have been working, you know, the same at the same place, like how much of that growing that we talk about when we, when our people tell us be young and go and do and, you know, get the education, but have a good time. How much of that um, relationship for nine years at such a young age stifled, you being able to have some growth, some growth, whether it be personal or professional. Mm. 
because yeah. I personally feel like who I was at 18, when I say at 27, I wasn't suited to be a wife. There was so much growth mm -hmm. that happened between 18 to 27. Yes. But even at 27, I wasn't ready. Mentally, I wasn't ready. I still, I don't even think, had I moved, I had moved or was about to move for the first time. Mm -hmm. Like the growth that I've had, even since I moved, being in different cities, learning different things, seeing different places has been not it hasn't been the same growth that I would have amassed if I stayed in one place yeah. or even if I stayed with one person. And I think, I think that's also an issue when you talk about being with somebody for that long is because at a certain point, and this is no shade to the person that had been in a relationship with her person since the age of 18, now 27 and they engaged. I just wonder, even when we talk about somebody who has the, the family pressure of staying with your college sweetheart because maybe your parents did or your grandparents did did y'all stay in that because you really grew together and still loved each other through those nine years or did you stay because there was familiarity there did you stay because it was the story of your family both of your parents there mm -hmm. um i just feel like when people have you grown or have you just stayed in the comfortable person that you were at 18 because, you know, this is what this person was used to and this is what this person was used to and it fits. It may have fit at 18, but if I grow and I change and I like something new or I want to be somewhere different, I won't have that person. So I'm just going to stay where I'm at. I just think that they, the the relationship is just completely approached differently. It's not Thank even- Thank you for sharing the live. Appreciate it. It's not even about- um you know, are we, are we growing as people? We are together. We've been together and all of these life experiences that are growing us were are happening to us at the same time. So it's not about, oh, I need to be free and I need to, you know, step outside of this relationship and find myself before I can marry you. No, I, I'm sure there's a lot of, there is a lot of comfort there. That's mm -hmm. you know, number one, but also again, all of these life experiences that happen and that can happen in a nine year span, they, you know, maybe they are happening in lockstep and mm -hmm. it's just, it just works for them. Mm -hmm. I think, and, but again, I think culturally they just approach relationships differently. So mm -hmm. meeting and marrying my college boyfriend is not some just foreign concept. Mm -hmm. Like, Oh my God, I can't believe I met the one in college. No, that's what you do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Dating someone, dating your college boyfriend and then not marrying him would probably be like a shocker. Mm. You know, that would be the okay. shocker. I think, okay. you know, I don't want to assume that these people, that these two haven't like grown or, or anything. I just think that in some instances, these life experiences might be happening at the same time. And then it results in growing together and kind of being like, I don't want to do my life without anybody else. I want to do life mm -hmm. with you because it's been wonderful this, you know, up to this point. So, mm -hmm. um, I well, think Ashley, you keep talking. I'm just, I got to grab my charger real quick. Um, I think oh. that sometimes when you're in a relationship and you're not, I guess, evenly, evenly yoked, this is when you run into why am I with this person and why have I been with this person for so long? I feel like they're stifling me. So again, these people are meeting each other and they're, you know, water seeks its level. So they're meeting each other at the same time in life and they're going through all of these experiences at the same time in life. Mm -hmm. So no, no one is out, you know, out working or, you know, out earning, no one's doing more or better than the other. Everything is just mm. kind of status quo. And then I think, you know, in the black community, well, I don't even want to say black community. I'll just say my dating experience, mm -hmm. you know, the person that I'm meeting isn't like at my level. And okay, so wait, before I even get into that, it was something you said that brought me back to when you said, you know, or even I mentioned we were encouraged to live our life. Yes. We were encouraged to have a good time. But at the same time, now we have people from your family or people from my family asking where the grand, when the grandkids come, mm -hmm. that's not me. You never even discussed. Do you even know if I want you to have grandkids? Right. Can we start there? Right. Also, I've been living my life. I've been having a good time. I've been traveling. I've been moving. I've been moving up in my career. I've been starting different businesses. I've been trying new things. And so now dating is only beginning to be at 
the forefront of my life in the serious capacity that I have it in now in the last, let's say five to seven years. Before that, yeah. Yeah. I, I was flying high, living life, moving and grooving. Okay. <laughs> um, I think that's an interesting dynamic that he can go from live your life, girl, have a good time. So all right now, well, we're the grandkids. Well, you've done enough Maybe living. Life. You've done enough living. <laughs> It's time to sit down. My grandma's definitely like, are you going to sit down yet? It's just like, I'm I'm sat. Like, I'm sitting down. But, like, I also am not just going to sit here and just not do anything. I, I'm not going to find a husband sitting inside the house. Like, mm-hmm. girlfriend. Friend, you, is that, I, see, I feel, I, I feel like I want to holler. I feel like a hit dog. <laughs> because that's really my issue. Even last night. I was like, I'm going to go out and put some clothes on. I'm going to go out, you know, put myself in the right space. And every time I talk myself into it, I talk myself out of it just as fast. I was asleep in my bed. And I mean, at 830, my sister was calling me at 1045 and I was pushing, ignore girl, I am deep in my slump. Pretty sure I did that on Friday night. So no mm-hmm. judgment here. No judgment here. Um, you know, I took a bath mon- Monday night. It was so nice, too. I watched a little movie on my laptop. You know, I had a little can, my little uh, bathroom candles going um and then i got out that tub <laughs> and i got my black ass in the bed <laughs> and it was like 9 30 9 30 I, 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 when i tell you i locked this house up like fort knox turned them lights off and got in that bed Close the kitchen it, down with mm-hmm. the light on kitchen's closed looking at my mm-hmm. animals kitchen's closed pal <laughs> Got in that bed, girl. Nine thirty, for real. Because I because I did what I was told, and I enjoyed life, and I moved, and I saw different things in different places, and met different people. I, although where I'm at currently, okay, but right now in this moment, I enjoy a bit of some of the perks of being single and living alone. Mm-hmm. I really do. Mm-hmm. I like leaving home and coming home, and it's quiet, it's clean, it's as even if it ain't clean, it's how I left it. Um, mm-hmm. I do like being able to come, go, move, and people be like, "Oh, well, I mean, I can travel too." I like being able to do shit without having to worry about anybody else. I don't have to worry about who's going to watch, who's going to feed, who's. I don't have to worry about it. I can just go without thought or consideration for anybody other than me. I enjoy those perks Mm -hmm. of being single. So I'm glad that I was told to enjoy life Mm -hmm. and to have a good time doing it. But I think the generation of people that I am in, there was something lost in the generation before me where when I'm ready to start dating and settle down and maybe have the grandkids that people want to ask about, Pickens is starting to look a little slim. Things don't look like now what they used to then. And there's a disconnect and a a lack of understanding between my generation and my parents' generation as to why, why is this taking so long? Or why isn't this happening? Or what's going on with X, Y, Z? Girl. Um, The dating space now, this is where I, this is when it comes, the conversation comes back to, you know, because I see how people my age who may not be from my culture are, treated in their marriage, how they're able to move through life without being um, a financial contributor and still having the lifestyle that they desire and that works for them. You can't, you can't act like oblivious. Like it's one of those things where white people say, well, I don't see color. Uh, yes, you do. That's just something that sounds good. So you think, so I'm not going to pretend like I don't see women my age or women in general having a certain type of lifestyle where they're able to still have the things that they desire and still be a wife in the home and take care of the kids and the spouse. I so why that. would I then go get with somebody just to appease other people and say, here go these grandkids when I'm literally splitting stuff 50, 50, I would rather literally do it by myself and pay a hundred percent than to deal with the headache. That's going to come with that nonsense. Mm-hmm. I'd rather do it on my own than to be begging somebody to do nice things for me or to treat me well, or having to explain why I spent X amount of dollars on my skincare products, or a spa day, or a solo vacation, or going out to brunch with my friends. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a disconnect that happened from the last generation, and now the dating space doesn't look like, for me at this age, what it looked like for my counterparts at an earlier age when they were saying, you're going to meet your husband in college. All of that, literally, literally. 
Um, I, I, like I said, I, I have my theories and it's, you see things and then things happen in real time in your face and it's kind of hard to ignore. Um, and then, and then, you know, there's those brief moments of when's it going to be my turn? <laughs> I do get those moments sometimes. I would be lying if I didn't feel that way sometimes, but then other times it's like I feel like we think that way because we see the good or we see the we see what we perceive to be the perks. But listen, them cons is showing up rather fast on TikTok these days, and I'm like, mm, girl, whoo, glad that ain't me. Yeah. So with that, I do I do know of horror stories, and there are a lot of people I do know that were married at one point in time who aren't married anymore. Mm. Um, so it, it, honestly, it's a mixed bag and you, you don't want to generalize and it's very hard not to generalize, but then also all of these different things are happening all at the same time. So you have to consider that, Mm -hmm. but you know, like, like you said on last week's show, if it walks like a duck, talks like a duck, chances are it's a duck in one, in, in one community, you are to go to college and get that uh, degree but you are also to get that MRS as well you are to get hmm. that Mrs um, mm-hmm. and when I was going to college that was not what was but is it because that wasn't the message that my mom she didn't want to communicate it to me or did my mom go to college and was fooling around with the boys and got caught up and so she didn't want that to be my my situation you know mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. Her, the way she kind of directed my life and my college experience is completely you know, because of her experience, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. I can't, we can't, I can't even say that it has anything to do with like a cultural thing. But it does though. Well, I mean, but it does though, because there are so many other people who can say, well, I I can tell you, go have a good life. Okay. (laughs) Set yourself up so that you can do these things without a man. Yeah. And without a man wasn't told once it was repeated. Many times. Yeah, that's, I did hear that. I did hear that as yeah. well. I did ha- hear that as well. Yeah. Don't like, don't be worried about them little, them ashy ass niggas. Like they're going to be there. Them fast boys going to be there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, they just trying to get their rocks off anyway. Like it's not, don't take, you don't need to be taken that seriously right now. And now when I want to take a man seriously, he's dumb. <laughs> Girl, these men are, they're like, I just, I mean, well, I also I also wonder if what's wrapped up in that is I'm not saying that the way that we went about life or we were told to go about life was wrong. Right. What if we're actually getting it right? But because it isn't the societal norm, it looks wrong. And so what I mean by that is what if we were supposed to enjoy our younger years and then what get we married later in life? Right. What if we were supposed to have the girls trips and do the partying and stay out all night and, you know, enjoy all of the things that we did and still do in our 20s and 30s? What if we were actually supposed to do all mm-hmm. of that, those things without having to worry about maintaining and nurturing? Because that's what you have to do in a relationship. Yeah. Nurturing a relationship at a young age instead of internalizing it and nurturing you know, ourselves and figuring out what it is we like and what we don't like, Mm -hmm. how we like to be dated, how we don't like to be dated, experiencing different things because experience is still, doesn't matter the generation. It is still the best teacher. The things I know at 37, I didn't know at 18. I didn't know at 25. I didn't know at 30. Hell, two years ago when I was 35, I I honestly still didn't know a lot of Mm -hmm. the wisdom that I have at this moment. So what if we were supposed to do all those things and amass all of the wisdom so that when we, when it was time to meet a man and settle down, we were ready mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and financially. Because the money that I make now didn't look like what they physically. Now, physically, things can change. Ah. <laughs> physically, we used to, when we used to be in Wendy's, drive uh-huh. through line on the regular. What did okay? you say? What physically, is- I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm doing everything I can to maintain the shape that I got. Okay, yeah, right. But I remember, baby, when I could take down a pan of rolls and not blink. Or I <laughs> was not sure where that was going when you said take down. <laughs> oh, listen. listen. Ah. 
Okay, because I could face a bottle of wine on my own. Take down a pan. I could face a bottle of wine on my own. Okay, and th- and I was doing it at twenty five. Now thirty seven, a glass gonna be it for me. Yeah, because I'm few reasons. I'm hurting. Today. I don't recover the same, and my body don't accept it the same. Okay, the carbs they last a they little stick. longer. They stick. They stick age. on you. Yeah. But what if we were supposed to do all of those things and have all of those experiences and it is now that we are supposed to be having the kids and not 10, 15 years previous when we were inexperienced, we didn't know shit, we didn't have shit. Like what if what if this is actually the way to do it? But because this is not the normal way or what's considered normal, everybody's telling us that we're behind, that we're late that we need to catch up to the party. We're too old to do this. We're too old to do that. So my thoughts there are, let's see the divorce rate, the Mm. marriage rate, and the demographics of the married couples and all children born 20 years from now. Mm. That will will determine if we, we'll, we'll see what kind of trends come out of women and men getting married later in life when they were more financially stable Mm -hmm. and um more more sure of themselves as individuals so that when they do get married they stay married Mm -hmm. you know and Mm -hmm. they raise a raise a family as a result so you're not raising a kid in a broken home Mm -hmm. um you know just i i'm sure that there will be some surveys and some data to that will back up your theory that maybe we are actually getting it right by waiting until our thirties for our romantic life and our fam, you know, for our romantic life to start and our families to expand. That Mm -hmm. is going to be something that we can Google and figure out in 20 years for sure. I would love to be a part of that study when somebody from Hampton or Howard or Spelman or Morehouse wants to conduct it because I want us to get it right. I don't want the demographic to be sued. So no, skewed. So notice the, the, the colleges that I named were HBCUs. Mm-hmm. Anyway, <laughs> um, I would like to be a part of that conversation because I have real time evidence and data in dating and mm-hmm. in having a front row seat to some of my friends life who didn't who chose the you know didn't choose the latter version like I am they chose to have children much earlier um by baby daddies versus husbands or they chose to get married earlier and they are child they doing a lot of things one thing they ain't doing is acting like husbands and wives but anyway um mm. i'm seeing things in real time that that can help me convince myself Okay, help me convince myself that I'm not I'm not late at all. I'm actually exactly where I'm supposed to be at the time that I'm supposed to be here because just like I know that I didn't know no 18 year olds who were who were people that I should have been in long term relationships at 18. That's not one. And that's not to take a dig at anybody that I previously dating, but they just weren't supposed to be there mentally financially at the age of 18 mm-hmm. and who i was at 27 i was not suited to be a wife and i and i don't even think that that's a bad thing what i was suited to do at 27 was grow interpersonally was travel yep was make friends was lose friends to have relationships or friendships fall apart and make new friends and yeah. you know learn the places and spaces that really embrace me and make me better and help me grow that's what i was supposed to do in that 27 now at 37 Baby, put the ring on the finger because a girl is ready to do her thing. Hello. Um. So I don't know. I personally feel like we're getting it right. And I don't care what the societal norm says or shows. Um, Because a lot of these societal norms are things that have been continued throughout the years that haven't changed and haven't evolved and everything else has evolved. The importance of degrees has evolved. Um, the economy has involved the price of eggs, okay, <laughs> done evolved, the price of a home, the, 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 the process of getting a home, all of those things has, have evolved. So if all of those things have evolved, why do we still have one constant thing that hasn't tweaked or changed at all and to everybody else it still makes you sense? You better wake it, it up, wake it up. It doesn't make sense to me. Why would I still be doing what my grandma and granddaddy was doing back in the 20s and 30s and 40s in 2024? Right. That just don't make sense. So I would say to any of the the, the uh, listeners, um, whether you are young or old, um, if you're young, I'm not going to say that your people telling you to live your life is wrong. 
Um, I would say keep some of your maybe future goals in mind while you're young, while you're traveling, while you're having a good time. But don't think that once you get to a certain age that it's over for you or that it's impossible or you're behind or late or where you're not supposed to be. I think that the process of growing and evolving and becoming who you are as a person would make you better to be better suited as a wife, would make you a better mother. The patience I had at 37, baby, I would have had to bail out every day. If I had a baby younger, because my patients weren't there. I didn't have a lot of tolerance for a lot of things back then. Mm -hmm. So there's that. That's funny. And I and also, also, this is something I thought about. I thought about making it a TikTok video, but by the time I got, you know, somewhere I could record, the thought had left my mind. Why is it that our generation is a generation that is now in a place where we are always healing from something we you know need all this therapy none of these things not saying anything is wrong with any of these things but we are a generation who is always healing always needing to detox always needing to our minds always needing to um you know take a step back why are we a generation that is always healing from past traumas family traumas it would lead you to believe that maybe the way that our parents did it, maybe we should do it a different way so that we don't continue to perpetuate and create a generation that's always healing from shit. Now, I'm not saying that there's going to be a level of perfectionism, but God damn, how much family trauma we got to heal from? Mm. Like literally that is everybody's like token. I'm going no contact with this person now or like at some point we got to start evaluating what did what happened with all the people our age feeling as though they have to heal from all this generational trauma and all this this family shit what are we going to do differently so we don't pass the same curse on to our children maybe we won't raise our kids the way that we were raised in the ways that we were like maybe there was a level of trauma that was induced because maybe our parents were having children at an age where they weren't financially set up mm -hmm. Were they were they divorcing? Where we saw, you know, things going on within the uh, within the home clothes. that weren't get healthy, and maybe if they had waited till late, later in life to do some of the things that we're being told that we should have been did, like it's just I think that the study that you're talking about, all of that has to go in tandem. Like we got to talk about it all. Let, let's just not talk about one thing. Let's talk about the way grandma and granddaddy did it and the way that it worked. Well, yeah, and the well, way mom and daddy did it and the way that it worked. Why would we be doing it the same way and thinking that that's going to work when everything else didn't change? Right. Yeah, you'll, we'll ha they'll have to. What they'll have to pull the rates. What were the what was the marriage and divorce rates in the black community in the twenties, nineteen twenties and thirties, and what do they look like now? Mm -hmm. And you know what was the average age of the married married couples? What's the average age of the married couples now? Like there's there's a there's a handful of benchmarks that can be used to figure this out and, mm -hmm. and as far as you know people healing from things i think it's it's gonna ha it's gonna take as long as it needs to take because you know people to this day are still very hush hush about things mm -hmm. people still what happens in my house stays in my yes, house even in in 2024 there's somebody is somebody is doing something and then told somebody's kid to, to not tell anybody there's all kind mm. it's it's happening because no one knows how to say fuck that i am telling mm -hmm. and my mama is gonna believe me and mm -hmm. i am gonna call the police mm -hmm. and we are going to arrest you and you are mm -hmm. gonna do some time for touching on like that is how you don't hand on uh generational trauma you mm -hmm. don't keep it hush hush and mm -hmm. so I think people nowadays at our age, millennials, where, you know, black women are going to college at higher rates, we're, you know, making money, we're insured, we're going to therapy. There are things that you, that probably have happened to them as a kid that they didn't even realize was improper be, until they got in front of a therapist. So it's just, that's a- And I'm going to tell you one thing that our generation is guilty of that I can see- uh, now, I don't, I'm going to say my generation, but not me because I don't have kids. And what I'm specifically talking about is in reference to people with children. But I think that 
the generation behind us is going to realize how traumatizing it was for them to constantly see us partying and smoking in the way that we do. Mm. To see a group of women doing a cheers and all the kids beside them got little shot glasses of water or juice too, you really don't realize what that's instilling in that child. Yeah. Look at the, look at the Christmas toy that was that went viral, the hookah set. A child at the age of three, have you didn't see it? It's like a little, I don't know if it's by Fisher Price, but it's like a little Fisher Price hookah, like a play toy. No, I did not yes. see that. Yeah, and 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 I tell you one that we can we can say was our previous generation was. Do you remember candy cigarettes? Yep, I remember candy cigarettes. Mm -hmm. You know, like little things, little things like that. Like you know, are we raising a generation of alcoholics? Because we include alcohol in everything: funerals, baby showers, birthday parties, right. weddings, bar mitzvahs, divorce <laughs> parties. Literally, nothing moves without a drop of tequila in the building. <laughs> True that. You know. <laughs> When it used to be like my mom will go to events like those and kind of like turn her nose up because that wasn't something that they used to do. Mm. You wasn't having a baby shower back then and alcohol was involved. But now, oh, no. it's like, who got to look in their trunk? So let's go to the parking lot. Oh, you know? goodness, no. There might be a little champagne or a mimosa or something or, you know, something mm -hmm. light, but no hard and alcohol. And it wasn't in excess. Shower. It wasn't in no. excess. Even the way that we party, you know, I remember when I was going to the club, one little section. What, what was a dance floor when you was on it? <laughs> that was it. Which is why now I want to go somewhere where people are actually dancing. I remember being in a club with a guy like within the mm -hmm. last year and we were actually dancing with each other. We weren't sitting in this section. Yeah. Arms Rock steady. Hookah smoking. See, you said it, not me. You know, hookah, which is nothing wrong with any of those things because I enjoy that, but not every time. Right. I don't want to do that every time. I actually want to enjoy myself and, and actually be present in the moment. If I'm going to sit and smoke hookah, baby, we can do that at the crib Why I got my, my, my nobody clothes on. Mm. I don't want to put on my best yeah. just to go sit around the folks I don't know and puff, puff, and pass. That breathing don't make sense. In, breathing in everybody else's breath. Mm -mm. Hmm. Hmm. I said that like I wasn't in Turk smoking hookah, <laughs> but we was outside though. Well, friend, this was a very layered conversation. Yes. I think we hit the points that we wanted to talk about. Yes. We talked about, um, you know, different the ethnicities, the... what they tell. We talked about the TikTok videos and that leading into the ethnicities and how they tell their daughters or, or sons to go to college and what they're supposed to be there for um, versus our community. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about um, In truth being at an age where we were told media. to enjoy life and do all the things you're supposed to do as a 20 something and, you know, living your own life and having your own place and paying your own bills and then moving through life and getting ready to a point where you're ready to settle down and be a wife um, and a mother and what that looks like in the dating space now, which if we didn't, let me just tell you, it is just... Superb. It's a dumpster fire. It's a dumpster fire. It's, the trash is literally on fire. Yep, it is. It is. And, and we also talked about the fact that there is a disconnect or there is an unspoken thing that's not being told, which is you're actually, you actually have it right for this generation in this day and age uh, to be waiting until you are a bit more mentally, emotionally, and financially set to have the family you want in addition to living the life that you want. Yes. Because I don't want to have to, I don't want to have to cut back on my personal things that I like because I had a baby. I don't want to do that. That doesn't sound like fun at all. <laughs> right. Maybe, you know, having to say, well, I ain't going to get my nails, which y'all know I'm a present girl at this point, but I guess I ain't going to get my nails done this week because some of got went up. You know? <laughs> I guess I'm going to have to just... I guess I'm going to have to, you know, DIY my hair, which ain't nothing wrong with that, but I'm just not that girl. I'm going to do DIY my hair because I got to pay daycare this week. Absolutely not. <laughs> I want to be able to do both. And I think that it was the best decision for me to wait until I was able to do so. I'm still not. Now, when I say for me, I don't mean I'm finna have no baby on my own because I'm just not having a baby with just no anybody. I'm not having a baby with nobody's son. I'm having a baby with my man. My husband. Yeah. That's just where I'm at. From your lips to God's ears. And to reality. <sighs> so, is there anything we missed in that long layered conversation, friend? Is there anything that we missed that we didn't hit? No, ma'am. This is 93 minutes of excellence. So, mm. 
Yeah, Black no. Excellence and Black History Month, my dad. I mean, because we even touched on social media and like intrusive thoughts and talking about per- the obsession to be perfect. And, you know, I think our uh, live definitely enjoyed this. Everybody doesn't always stay around for the entirety of the conversation, which is fine, but we've never had a live with 23 shares. So I think oh, we nice. did pretty doggone good. Hey, thanks for sharing, mm-hmm. y'all. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, that's all I have, friend. Nothing, and yes, nothing well, else. Tell me what you got planned for the week coming up. Uh, just work. No plans this week. Just work. Okay. Watching okay. the Grammys tonight, looking at everyone's fashions. I hope everyone looks nice. I feel like some of the stuff I've been seeing in the weekend at all these little weekend parties is just, you know, not making me very happy. So there's well, that. I hope everybody I hope everybody shows up to Pasha's Delight. I have seen some of the um, fashion week um looks and things um that I actually kind of like. I don't know how what that's gonna translate to the red. Stuff? I don't know if that's gonna translate to the red. When I say watching it, I mean via social media <laughs> clips and, and things. You know, I ain't turning on a tube. Um I don't know how that's gonna translate on the red carpet, but we will find out for sure. Yes, we will. Um I'm glad we had an episode where we didn't discuss some of the uh, entertainment news happening. I'm I, I'm happy to have a break. Though things have been happening, I'm just glad that we just spent all our time talking about real life shit. Right. Felt good. I mean, yeah. there's not there's nothing salacious to discuss in, anymore these days because there's it's, oh, it's been nothing oh. but good news. <laughs> no, I don't know if I agree with that. I don't know. Uh, but for the week, I don't have I have a lot of um I got a lot of like stuff planned this week, like with meetings and Zooms and stuff. So this is going to be a really busy week for me. Okay. Um, I'm also, believe it or not, I'm going to go ahead and say it. I'm also getting a little bit, um, y'all know I have been in this temporary living since January 5th. I think it is or 13 somewhere around that like the second week of January and I have been saying baby I have got some of the best sleep here mm-hmm. and it's really what really what contributed to that is because when I told y'all I wanted to be less fiscally responsible I wanted to just like be able to eradicate my mind of some of the responsibilities that you have when you have a home I haven't had a lot of that stuff and I just feel like I've gotten my best sleep because of it usually my problems be shaking me away <laughs> not shaking me away bitch, we gotta be able to pay wake up ho time to clean up like i just i have i have enjoyed the break that i've had and we are less than 30 days into when i will be moving into my new space okay so i'm just a little bit sad that i'm gonna miss just being at ease oh but we move um so yeah that's what i got planned this week i got a lot of zooms and meetings and stuff i gotta get together today I'm, i gotta get back up to pick up my car i dropped my car off the service this morning so i gotta do that but other than that i don't have no plans um hopefully if i talk myself into stepping out one evening i don't talk myself out because that's usually what i do mm. i just a lot of times it, the sun be shining the weather be feeling good your hair is the pretty playlist be, the yeah. playlist be hidden your hair is pretty your skin popping you need to go outside <laughs> You right, friend. You go outside. Okay, okay. By the nighttime, though, the sun be down and it'll be a little cool, and I'll be like wrapped up in the cover. So that's really okay. Cool. <laughs> you know, I can but anyway, do- thanks y'all for um. Thank you. Hey, what's going on? We're just wrapping up the podcast. Um, we've been on here for quite some time now, but you will be able to catch the episode on YouTube on Wednesday, and it also drops on streaming ser- all streaming services on Friday. If you want to catch up with previous episodes, uh, we always do them on TikTok Live, but they are the full episode. Episode is on YouTube. It is under the same difference podcast. Make sure you also follow me on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, it was always joy. And Pasha, if you just click the top of the list of people who are in here, you will be able to find her TikTok handle and her name on Instagram and Twitter is the same as well. Passionista. That's all I got. Thank y'all. See y'all next week. Bye. I don't know where the balloons come from, but okay. (laughs) Bye, y'all.